2014, the U.S. consumed 28.85 trillion kilowatt hours of energy. 10% of it was renewable. Excluding the biomass category, which lumps together wood and biofuels like ethanol, hydroelectric installations led U.S. renewable energy generation with 26% of the total. Wind accounted for 18%, solar 4%, and geothermal 2%. Overall, renewable use is expected to increase by more than 30% through 2040. Estimates from the Energy Information Administration show wind power will take the top spot from hydro by 2038. Solar, geothermal, and biomass are expected to increase at a higher rate than wind through 2040. We're already seeing signs of early progress. 84% of new generation capacity added to the national grid in the first quarter of 2015 was renewable. A goal, if you will, is grid parity, the point at which the cost of a given renewable source is less than or equal to that of traditional coal costs. This also accounts for hardware installation and maintenance costs, not just the cost of the energy it generates. Economies of scale apply as readily to the renewable energy industry as to any other. Prices for wind and solar infrastructure and even electric vehicle costs are falling as capacity increases. In the solar panel field, there's a special name for it, Swanson's Law or the Swanson Effect. For every doubling of shipped photovoltaic capacity, price drops by 20%. And according to some analysts looking at some markets, wind and solar are starting to win on price versus conventional fuels. But it's harder to get more specific. Policy and regulation in the solar market, for example, differ widely by state. And starting costs are just part of the larger puzzle of sustainable renewable energy. Another is dispatchability, or how easy it is to turn an energy source on and off when needed. Most renewables aren't as reliable as coal or natural gas because they aren't dispatchable. Solar power only works when the sun's up, and its energy can be limited by cloudy or hazy days. Wind power requires wind. Hydro can depend on seasonal precipitation to refill reservoirs. Geothermal energy is one of the few dispatchable renewables, and actually one of the most efficient and cost-effective energy sources around, according to the Energy Information Administration. But it's highly dependent on location, and still expensive because it hasn't scaled up to the extent solar or wind has. At the same time, scale itself can be an issue. Some technologies are already pushing the limits of our engineering. One Ars Technica investigation found wind turbine blades can only be so large before they risk gravity pulling them apart. Their towers have to stay thin enough to fit under highway overpasses, and if they're too tall, it's hard to install generators on top of them. And for all the emissions they don't represent, renewable installations nonetheless pose some unique environmental impacts. The outer edges of turbine blades can move at 180 miles per hour, and the American Bird Conservancy worries these high-speed strikes could kill 1.4 million birds a year by 2030. Solar concentrator facilities make headlines for occasionally incinerating nearby birds like enormous magnifying glasses. And studies have shown geothermal wells can trigger earthquakes as they extract and replace hot water. America is number one in wind power. Every three weeks, we bring online as much solar power as we did in all of 2008. Sustainable energy has been a talking point in any number of elections, but progress on renewable policy on both the national and local scales has been a mixed bag. It seems for every initiative to train a new workforce, like this White House plan to prepare some 75,000 people for solar jobs by 2020, there's a Solyndra that takes more than half a billion dollars in federal loans before sliding into bankruptcy. Meanwhile, entrenched energy businesses have pushed back against renewables for years with state-level surcharge legislation. APS was waging a multi-million dollar campaign to dramatically boost charges on solar customers. Eleven of the bills seek to amend state laws that allow homeowners with solar panels to sell excess electricity back into the grid. Some utilities cite worries that solar users, for instance, are not paying enough for the utility infrastructure fees. In the meantime, the corporate sector is generating its own momentum. Google alone has sunk more than $1 billion into various renewable energy projects and uses them to help power its campuses and data centers. Tesla seems to have successfully commercialized the giant battery. Its solar-charged power wall has the potential to make day-to-day -day energy manageable on an individual scale, and its utility-sized versions could do the same for existing energy vendors. We have this this handy fusion reactor in the sky called the sun, okay? <laughs> you don't have to do anything, it just works. 
<laughs> it helps that Tesla has made the tech comparatively cheap. Powerwall start at $3,000, which stings a lot less than the $20,000 some analysts were expecting. It's likely Powerwall isn't a magic bullet, despite CEO Elon Musk's ambitions, but it's evidence that renewables are on the way, scale is increasing, and prices are falling. In the 10 years leading up to 2014, average solar installation prices dropped some 50%, and costs keep trending downward. U.S. residents can claim a 30% federal tax credit on qualifying solar installations, for example, at least through the end of 2016. I'm Cliff Judy for Newsy, News with the Y.